Mickey Mantle, one of the most forged autographs from the Operation Bullpen Ring. There are some pretty, <laughs> some pretty bad ones out there. It's like, man, they just didn't even try, you know? Very tough autograph to authenticate for the novice collector. Uh, here is an autograph that can throw off a ton of collectors. All right, welcome back to another episode of the Power Sports Memorabilia Show. I am your host, Matt Powers. Thank you again for joining me. Please visit the website, powersportsmemorabilia.com, and also give me a follow over there on Instagram, at Powers Autographs. So who are some of the most forged sports autographs on the market today? And more importantly, how can you avoid them? Now, that's today's topic. Now, anytime there is big money to be made in any industry, Forgers are bound to pop up. The online marketplaces have done a better job in recent years of getting rid of fake autographs off of their platforms. However, it is nearly impossible for them to get rid of them all. Important we know some vital background on each athlete's signing history and proper authentication before buying. I talked to Jimmy Spence Jr. over at JSA, and here are 10 autographs that he says they are constantly failing over there at JSA. All right, number 10, Michael Jordan. This one comes as no surprise. Every week it seems like someone is emailing or calling me asking uh, you know, my opinion on a $500 Michael Jordan autograph jersey they found on eBay. You know, they of course want to know if it's real and you know, they think they found the steal of the century. And as you can guess, a $500 signed Jordan jersey is about as real as uh, oceanfront property in Arizona, okay? Jordan jerseys sell in the thousands of dollars now. The cheapest one I can find at the making of this video was for 5,000 bucks, all right? So why would someone sell an authentic signed jersey of his for $500, okay? The answer is they wouldn't sell an authentic one at that price. Now, if you are looking to buy Michael Jordan's autograph, there are a few things you need to know before you hit that buy button. First, Jordan has been an exclusive with Upper Deck, better known as UDA, before dinosaurs roamed the earth, all right? He's been with them for a long time. This is the company he has done like all of his private signings for. Uh, you know, this is not to say there are not legitimate autographs out there without upper deck authentication, but 99% of the real Jordan autographs out there come with an upper deck certificate of authenticity. So a couple things to know about upper deck. They apparently lost their online authentication database for items signed prior to 2002. So those hologram numbers are not verifiable on their website. So you have to email them for verification. You have to send them pictures of the item, the hologram number, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and sometimes they're not even able to verify it then. So it's really kind of a, a big mess with that, okay? So uh, also I've noticed that upper deck holograms do have a tendency to fall off like fully intact still. So I've had this happen to me twice on Jordan jerseys. And, you know, what would stop someone from taking that hologram and applying it to, you know, put a little, put a little adhesive on the back and then just applying it to another Jordan item? You know, absolutely nothing, right? Now, this doesn't happen to all of his autographs, okay? I've only had it happen to me twice, okay? And, and these were on ones that were signed in the early 2000s. So the adhesive quality probably wasn't what it is today. So it definitely is not a... Uh, overly popular experience like that, all right? So hopefully their holograms are better now in 2021. But if you are looking to buy a Jordan Upper Deck autograph not direct from the UDA website, I personally would make sure the item has, of course, the numbered hologram on the item, the matching COA card with that hologram number on it, and that number is in the Upper Deck's online database. And lastly, I would, of course, compare the Jordan autograph that you were looking to buy to examples on the Upper Deck website to make sure they match up. Of course, people are, are buying autographs outside of the UDA website because there are some better deals to be had than uh, buying it directly from the UDA website currently. So just make sure that you follow that process. You know, but lastly, though, if you do want to guarantee that you are getting the real deal, 
You're going to have to fork over half of your life savings and buy one for, direct from the UDA website. They are currently $15,000, okay? So $15,000, you heard that right. That's, that's like a solid Honda car right there. Like that's one that'll last you like 300,000 miles right there. But you know, the best way to get guarantee you're getting a real deal is to buy it directly from the UDA website. You know, print off your receipt, keep it with your item forever. I would also take pictures of the item and the COA upon receiving it. Print those off, keep that with the item. It just adds to the authentication that you were the original purchaser of the item. And keep in mind, you know, there are also legitimate Jordan autographs out there that are authenticated by JSA, PSA, and Beckett. These are mainly his in-person autographs, which Jordan does, you know, occasionally sign. Typically not the best autograph because it isn't a controlled environment, you know, like a sit-down signing with Upper Deck where he's actually signing on a table. I would only purchase a Jordan third-party authenticated autograph if you have a bit of experience collecting Jordan autographs and feel confident that you agree with the authenticator's opinion that that is a real Jordan autograph. All right, number nine, Mickey Mantle. One of the most forged autographs from the Operation Bullpen Ring. Uh, if you don't know what that is, jump on Google, do a quick uh, uh, search on that. There's tons of information out there, including a whole book written on it. Basically, it was the largest forgery ring the FBI ever brought down. Mantle, along with several other athletes, such as Ted Williams and Joe DiMaggio, were being forged in droves. I mean, thousands and thousands and thousands of items. A couple things you want to be looking for on the Mantle autographs. Now, uh, Baseball Hall of Fame autographs on YouTube put together this uh, quick video on what to look for. Uh, when deciding whether the mantle autograph is legit or not. He explained it so well, I thought I would just show you a quick, short clip of that. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So again, this is a nice mantle. Now let's go, let's compare this with some bad mantles. So the first one here is the classic banana mantle. Let's pull this up. Let's see if we pull this one bigger or not. So as you can see here, hopefully, it is, it's just bad. I mean, this looks not like a moon. It looks like a banana. Uh, if you look here also, the U is rounded. It's not a sharp point. It's rounded. So, again, that's the U you want to look for when you're looking for a fake mantle. Again, ha you look for the banana, not the moons, and you see it's a U, really a U at the bottom, not at the top necessarily. Also, I mean, this looks pretty straight. Uh I mean, I've been looking at Mantle for a long time. It's bad. Now let's move to flat real quickly here. Let's put, I want to get, I want to show you a good flat before we get to a bad flat. So a good one right here. And again, I took this off the PSA website. Now what's good about this is the Mantle, you can see how it hooks around here, hooks around here. Again, there's that nice V, sharp V. And when he signs flats, usually the E drop down. So in the, looking for a baseball the A should be dropping down. On a flat, the E should be dropping down. So let's look, look at some uh, classic. These are, again, they're all Operation Bullpens. I know they are. Uh, here, look, the A starts down first. So when uh, probably a Marino did this one, he took a baseball version of a mantle, fortunately. And so, again, the A drops down. And, again, it's tough to see here. But the V, the N, like, or I call it the V here, is not real sharp. Third-party authenticators such as JSA, PSA, and Beckett are very good at spotting a good mantle autograph. If you see a mantle with their COA, chances are that that is a good mantle. Okay? The same rule, uh, rule would apply to Ted Williams and also Joe DiMaggio. If you don't feel comfortable buying their autograph unauthenticated, again, stick to buying one from JSA, PSA, or Beckett. Uh, they know those two autographs and Mantle, you know, absolutely the best in the world. So you can feel confident that you're buying a legit autograph from one of those guys. In regards to Mantle, if you don't feel comfortable buying an unauthenticated one of him just yet, again, I would stick to one of those or an upper deck authenticated item as he was an exclusive of theirs um, many, 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 many moons ago. But again, with Mantle, Look for those banana M's and then also the N in the mantle, the way that he explained in the video, and also the flow and angle of the mantle, okay? Those are all three important things that you want to look for in an authentic mantle signature. All right, number eight, Kobe Bryant. 
you know, with Kobe dying at such a young age and being just very popular among collectors all over the world, you know, his, his autograph is, you know, can be highly forced, right? Kobe has a uh, very simple older autograph, kind of with the K and just the little loop. You know, in my opinion, that makes it kind of an easier autograph to, to forge. His autograph later on in his career was much different, much more of a full name autograph. But a, a couple things to consider uh, about Kobe, right? Early in his career, he was an upper deck exclusive athlete. And then he moved on to uh, Panini after that. You know, at the end of his time with upper deck and his entire time with Panini, he had that full name autograph. You know, same thing with Jordan and Kobe autographs. I would only be buying UDA or, or uh, you know, Panini autographs in Kobe's case where the hologram is in their online database and it also comes with a matching COA card. You know, it's just my personal preference to cover all my bases. You know, I want to make sure that I'm buying for an expensive item like this, an authentic autograph, obviously. There are a ton of PSA authenticated jerseys out there. You know, in my opinion, uh, those, are, those are probably most likely good. You'll see them mainly on uh, custom jerseys, though, not on the officially licensed ones in most cases. I personally wouldn't buy any Kobe uh, autograph that wasn't already authenticated. It's just way too easy to forge uh, due to his simple autograph. You know, Kobe will become a more expensive autograph as the years go by. You know, do it right the first time. Buy a UDA or a Panini authenticated autograph. All right, number seven, Tiger Woods. An extremely tough autograph to obtain in person. The likelihood of someone getting an autograph from him and having it be a nice, high-quality autograph and then having it authenticated by JSA, for example, are very, very slim. Like many athletes on this list, Woods is an upper deck exclusive athlete. Only buy Tiger Woods UDA authenticated items. UDA makes such cool golf items of his. And in my opinion, he's still somewhat affordable. I've seen photos as cheap as 700 bucks lately, but mainly in the $1,500 range. Uh, the photos they have him sign to Upper Deck are just absolutely epic. I mean, the angles that they take and the different uh, you know, environments and stuff like that are just absolutely so cool. Golf flags are a very awesome item to have in your collection, even the shirts too. I mean, if you can find one of those, those red Sunday ones, those are absolutely epic. But same thing with all the other UDA guys, you know, buy an autograph that's in their database and has the matching COA card. And number six, Wayne Gretzky. Gretzky does sign a decent amount of autographs in person, okay? So there is a okay shot at getting him to sign something for you. Not great, but I mean, way better than some of the other guys that we've talked about on this list. Uh, because of that, you'll see a decent amount of you know quality JSA, PSA, and Beckett signed photos and jerseys out there. Gretzky has a very quick autograph, so there should be no starts and stops with his autograph. Currently, he's an upper deck exclusive athlete, so everything we have been talking about with upper deck applies here. You know, buy the item with the matching hologram on the item and also on the COA card, and that it's in the online database. Number five, Tom Brady. Probably the most popular football autograph on the market today. Brady has a relatively simple autograph that many forgers have tried to replicate. Uh, they can be pretty easy to spot. There are some pretty, <laughs> some pretty bad ones out there. It's like, man, they just didn't even try, you know. But there are there are a couple good ones that do have pop up, you know, every now and then. He is a very tough autograph to get in person. Okay, so if you do get one, it is very very sloppy. It's not even recognizable in most cases. Again, the chances of you finding a very nice Brady in-person autograph that can be authenticated by JSA, PSA, or Beckett are very, very slim. You have a better chance of finding an honest politician, okay? Very difficult to do. Couple things on Brady. He was a long time exclusive of TriStar. He's currently now with Fanatics. 99% of the legit autographs out there will have one of their numbered holograms on the item which will then be verified online on their respective sites. There is no matching COA card with TriStar or Fanax. There's just the hologram that you verify on their site. TriStar recently changed theirs to a QR code. 
and Fanatics has uh, had a QR code for quite some time. Basically, you just scan it with your phone and it'll take you to their website or it will verify that item and the item that's associated with it. Now, yes, any hologram can be faked, but 99% of the ones you see out there are 100% legit. 99% out there are 100% legit. You know, It's like those things, 70% of the time, it works all the time. <laughs> but Fanatics has recently even started doing uh, letters of authenticity that are notarized in, uh, on 2021 uh, signed Brady product. Those are very cool. And that, that's what we got to get to in this industry is a photo of the item uh, that is uh, matched on the website there. So you can see the exact autograph that matches with that hologram or having a notarized letter that's also included with that too. Some sort of way to get an extra layer of authentication. Anytime we can do that, I totally dig that, especially on autographs that are getting very, very expensive, such as Tom Brady. Again, the rule of thumb on Brady is only buy TriStar or Fanatics authenticated autographs of his. That's it, okay? Best quality and authenticity. At number four, Mike Trout. Uh, probably the most popular autograph in baseball outside of Shohei Otani this year. Uh, Trout has a very simple autograph, which again opens him up to forgers. Uh, Trout did have a different signature his rookie year. So if you see an item uh, like this, they are very, very rare and valuable. I do have one with his MLB debut inscription on there, and I absolutely love it. I got it for what I thought was an absolute bargain at the National this year. And I love items like this when an athlete changes their autograph and no longer signs a, a certain way. Uh, Trout is one of those rare superstars that does sign a good amount at the games. Okay? So you will see a ton of his autographs that are PSA, JSA, or Beckett authenticated. Again, those guys are pretty good at spotting his autographs. But again, Trout has such a simple autograph, they can make mistakes. Uh, but Trout has been an exclusive of Major League Baseball since the beginning of his career. In my opinion, I would buy only Trout MLB authenticated autographs. They will hold the most value over the long term. Uh, each Trout Auto will have that little QR code hologram that you can scan with your phone. There is no matching COA card with the MLB authenticated items. It's just the numbered hologram that is verified on their site. All right, number three, Muhammad Ali. A very tough autograph to authenticate for the novice collector. Since Ali had Parkinson's disease, you know his handwriting wasn't the uh, best later on in his uh, life. His authentic autograph can be difficult to spot given this circumstance. I personally wouldn't mess around with any authentic, uh, unauthenticated Ali autograph. It's just way too easy to get burned. What would I buy? There are some PSA DNA witness uh, uh, autographs out there from one of his last signings. Those are good. Uh, online authentics. Witnessed a lot of his signings in the early 2000s. Signer Sports took part in a ton of signings with him. Um, Superstar Greetings, when they were still around doing signings, they represented Joe Frazier and had a, a good amount of dual sign items with him and Ali that are good. But seriously, you know, don't get burned on an Ali autograph. There are plenty of good options out there as he signed a lot. Pick one out there that has a witness authentication with it. Number two, Derek Jeter. Uh, here is an autograph that can throw off a ton of collectors since Jeter has changed his autograph so many times, probably more times than he's had uh, different girlfriends. I mean, his autograph is all over the place. A new collector would look at Jeter's rookie year autograph and would totally be convinced that was a fake Jeter. Uh, but he did, you know, again, Jeter signed for many, many years for Steiner Sports. He was an exclusive client of theirs. You will see a ton of Jeter items out there with their hologram on the item. I would be very cautious when buying an autograph with Steiner authentication. You know, 99% of them are good, but the story is somehow some holograms got out there or gotten in some bad guy's hands, and you can tell when you see these items that the autograph just looks different. So I would just be very, very cautious if you see uh, an item of his that just, just his hologram on there. Be very, very cautious of that. If I was buying an item with just the Steiner hologram, I would make sure it had the matching COA card of theirs and also double check the Jeter autograph and match it up with some good ones. Uh, depending on what area you're buying it from, you can match it up with an MLB authenticated one. Steiner did uh, not switch to a numbered hologram system until the end of their deal with Jeter. So you can find some items with a numbered Steiner hologram 
and also MLB authentication numbered hologram since Steiner was an MLB authentication licensee holder at one time. That is what I would be looking for uh, with in regards to Derek Jeter. Any item with just the, again, the Steiner non-numbered hologram and no COA card, I would be very cautious and deal with that on a case-by-case -case basis. Also, just know that you will see a ton of items out there with the Steiner COA card that say just Derek Jeter autograph on it. It says nothing about the item. doesn't say, you know, Derek Jeter autograph baseball or Derek Jeter autograph jersey. It doesn't say anything about what's associated with that COA card, okay? Typically, those were uh, items that customers had sent in to an autograph signing. So anytime you sent in an item to a Derek Jeter signing, Steiner would send back your item with that generic card probably just to save them time on processing orders so they didn't have to type each individual item out there. So they just put Derek Jeter autograph on there. All recent Jeter autographs, we're talking 2020 and on, should have an MLB authentication hologram as they have been present for all the paid private signings with them over the last two years. Fanatics is also good as all of their items will come with MLB authentication. JSA, PSA, and Beckett are all pretty good about picking out good Jeter autographs, uh, but he's had so many variation and has actually done a fair amount, a number of signings. I would try and find an MLB authenticated Jeter autograph before I dove into any third party Jeter authenticated items. And number one, LeBron James. LeBron James, LeBron James, LeBron James. Uh, last but certainly not least, you know, when you are the most popular current playing basketball player and a global icon, your autograph tends to be forged. Big money to be made with LeBron. You know, here's the thing with LeBron. He is absolutely almost impossible to get a free autograph from in person. Very, very challenging. Uh, I've had luck authenticating items he signed from high school. And, and, you know, these can be you know, a little bit more straightforward than his current autograph, mainly because the items he signed are dated from that time period and he had a much different autograph then. But, you know, the chances of you finding a legitimate, uh, you know, recent autograph of LeBron that's not upper deck authenticated are slim to none. Okay. LeBron has been signing autographs as an exclusive client for them for basically his entire career. He doesn't like signing in person, so you're just not going to find something that's legit that's not upper deck authenticated. Again, the number one rule when buying LeBron James is always buy upper deck authenticated autographs. You know, just like Michael Jordan, same exact deal. Every item you buy from there should have the you know, upper deck numbered hologram on the item, the matching COA with that same numbered hologram on there, and also be verified in the online database. Okay, that's it. Don't even mess around with anything else. Okay, save yourself the time. You know, this will arguably be uh, you know, one of your biggest purchases for your collection. Do it right. If you want to go even a step further and buy it direct from UDA and keep your receipt with the item, that is a 100% guaranteed way to get a legit LeBron autograph. You know, Don't go playing MacGyver and thinking you can spot a legit LeBron autograph and save yourself a few thousand bucks, okay? Do it right the first time. All right, and there you have it. 10 autographs that are commonly forged and you should be very cautious when buying. Others that could have been on this list would be Babe Ruth, but you know, again, let the third-party authenticators handle him. They know the exact type of item he would have signed, the time period, and can also check if other autographs have been removed from that ball. You know, always buy Ruth with a third-party COA from JSA, PSA, or Beckett. And remember, never be rushed when buying an autograph. Okay, take your time, ask questions. And always pay in a method such as PayPal or with a debit card where you have some sort of recourse to the transaction go sideways on you. Again, hope you guys like this episode. Again, visit the website, powersportsroomvillian.com. Also, give me a follow over there on Instagram at Powers Autographs. If you like this shorter video, feel free to share, like, and subscribe. I definitely always appreciate it. I will see you guys on the next episode.